English like a native? Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com EffortlessEnglishClub.com My VIP members get a special discount on my pronunciation course. So join VIP and also get a big discount on my pronunciation course. All right, The Effortless English Show, our book club continues. Today, chapter six, chapter six of Animal Farm. And, uh, you know, I was reading it today to get ready for this show, and uh, I mean, immediately I thought of Venezuela. It's, it's like it's describing Venezuela, well, Venezuela maybe a year ago. <laughs> so it's, it's sort of scary how accurate this book about farm animals is. I mean, Orwell really saw the, the weaknesses and the, the terrible logic, I would say, the terrible consequences, the terrible results of this kind of socialism or communism or we can be more general, say totalitarianism. This attempt to totally control a group, a society, a country, or extremely control. All right, well, uh, you know how we do it, so let's just do it. I go through, I explain what happens, come back, we'll discuss some of the ideas, and then I'll go to questions and comments on Facebook Live. We're also on Facebook Live right now. Let's do it. Okay, so chapter six begins that the animals worked like slaves that year. So it's the next year, it's coming up, it's springtime again, the winter's over. So remember Snowball, they chased him away and then they started lying about him saying he was a big, terrible enemy. And then they start working and they worked like slaves. This is the first sentence of chapter six. You can see already something is terribly wrong. Their great revolution was supposed to save them from horrible treatment and tons and tons of work for nothing. And yet, they are now working like slaves. So, quite quickly, this revolution, this perfect society has become quite terrible. But, and this is, and this is the crazy part, and I, and I think maybe this is the sad part, but they were happy in their work. They didn't mind, they didn't care about the sacrifice and the extra effort because they believed they were working for everyone. They were not just for themselves, they were working also for all their other animals and for the future. And they were not working for those evil, terrible humans. So they still are happy, even though now they are working like slaves, they still believe. They still believe. They worked 60 hours per week, 60, 60 hours per week. And then in August, the eighth month, August, Napoleon, the leader pig, announced they would have to work also on Sunday, so more than 60. Here's a little of the dark humor again. He says, this is voluntary, right? You don't have to do it, but it's voluntary. <laughs> it means quote when I do this quote. Voluntary meaning not really voluntary. They say it's voluntary, but not. That's what this little air quotes are called. So voluntary, but if an animal did not work on Sunday, they would cut their food by half. So, they say voluntary, but not really voluntary because they're punished if they don't do it. They lose half their food if they don't do the extra work. So, yeah, kind of terrible, right? Um, kind of awful. <laughs> so, they're working 60 hour weeks and then on Sunday, even more hours. Next, they remember the windmill, which was Snowball's idea. But, and now, of course, Napoleon said, no, 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 it's my idea. They uh, start working on the windmill. 
let me change my camera here on Facebook. Okay, so I start working on the windmill, but they have a lot of problems trying to build the windmill. So they have all the materials they need, but the, the biggest problem, they have a lot of problems trying how to use equipment, all this stuff, how to build it. But the biggest problem is the, they, they need rocks. They need to, just kind of small rocks, right, to, to build the walls of the windmill. But they only have huge, huge, huge rocks, which are called boulders. Big, big, huge rocks. We call that a boulder, boulder. So they have these huge boulders and they need to break them. But they, they can't, you know, they're animals, so they don't have hands. So they can't use the, uh, they can't pick up and use the equipment to break up the rocks. So they're really confused. How do we do it? Finally, they decide they, they, they put a rope around the big boulders, the huge rocks, the boulders. They drag them, they pull them up to the top of like a big hill, a big with the cliff, and then they drop the rocks, and the rocks hit the ground and break. So this is their method to break the big boulders into smaller rocks that they can use. So the problem is it's super difficult work. It's very, very hard to pull, to drag. Drag is to pull when you're you're pulling something, but it's mo it's still connected to the ground, right? So it's even harder to pull. So they're dragging, they're pulling these boulders to the top and dropping them. And it's super, super hard work. All the animals have to help to do this. Except, of course, the pigs who just, they, they're just the managers. They just tell them what to do. The pigs don't actually do the hard work, as usual. Once again, our hero, Boxer, the, the horse, they say, he says, nothing could have been achieved without Boxer. So the work was too difficult. Without Boxer, they couldn't do it. But Boxer's the strongest one. He cares the most. He helps other people the most, right? He's, he's super kind, very, very kind. Very kind and caring, Boxer is. And so he pulls, 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 and he works harder than anyone else. And because of him, they managed to do this work. And everyone admires and loves Boxer because he's so great. And again, we are reminded Boxer has two slogans, two things he says always. Number one, I will work harder. I will work harder. I will work harder. The second thing he always says is Napoleon is always right. Napoleon is always right. The pig leader who represents, equals, kind of Stalin in, in our story. Next paragraph, we learn that they do not have more food than before. So they have about the same amount of food as they did before. So right before with Mr. Jones, and then now working for themselves, there's at this time, there's no difference in food. They're, still, they're eating about the same amount, but they're actually working much harder. So uh, another bad sign, right? So much more work, but same level of food. So, so in fact, they're, you know, are they really better now than with Mr. Jones? Uh, it seems like it's getting actually worse than it was with Mr. Jones. It will definitely, in the, the, ne the final chapters, get much worse. But now already, it's starting to turn, it's starting to change, and we're starting to see, ah, it's actually worse than before the revolution. But they're happier still, because they still believe. So it, mm, it's almost worse. However, this is the part that made me think about Venezuela in the news, right? Which is in the news at the moment. They start to have shortages. It says unforeseen shortages. Unforeseen means they didn't see it. They did not predict it. Didn't think it would happen. Shortages meaning they don't have enough of some things, right? They start to not have enough of some things. So, uh, it mentions oil for lights, uh, nails, strings, dog food, 
iron for the horseshoes, all these kind of things, because they don't make them on the farm. They don't make, they can't. They, they, they don't know how to make these items. And so they use, they're using them or losing them. And then now they don't have enough. They need more and they don't have enough, which is exactly what we see. Well, basically in every single communist country ever, um, full communists, some, <laughs> a few survive now, but they've kind of, they're not really economically communist anymore. Let's be honest. Uh, but what we see in Venezuela happening now, right? They don't have it. They don't have enough food. They're run, they're, they're starting to run out of food. And of course this is, this will happen on animal farm too. But before that, they, they didn't have enough toilet paper. They don't have enough, you know, tools. They don't have enough goods. They're even, they don't even have enough gasoline now in Venezuela, even though there are, they, they have lots of oil. So this just seems to happen every time, and we're seeing it in Venezuela now, the shortages. And so this starts to happen on Animal Farm. They don't have enough. of certain, They're running out of things, and they can't make them, them themselves. And because of this, Napoleon decides to trade with other farms. Now you remember, this was against their rules, that they would not trade, they would not use money. This is one of the important rules of the revolution. No trading, no using money. And that they would not deal with humans. They would not do business with humans. So these rules, suddenly, Napoleon's breaking them. He has to break them because they, they, they can't make these things themselves. They can't make this stuff, so they have to trade to get from other countries. Other countries countries, <laughs> right? Other farms, which of course means other countries. So these were some of the early rules. And once again, this kind of, again, it shows the power of propaganda. Uh, propaganda again means well, basically official lies, but the, the constant media lying, the lying, the lying, repeating the lies again and again, then they, the animals start to forget the truth. Right? So some of the animals kind of remember, wait, we're not supposed to use money. We're not supposed to trade. But then, again, you know, Napoleon's dogs growl and scare everybody. And then everybody sort of forgets. Oh. And the sheep, again, start saying the same phrase. Four legs good, two legs bad. Four legs good, two legs bad. Four legs good, two legs bad. Just repeating the same phrase again and again and again and again to silence, to kind of uh, distract and silence anybody who disagrees, right? It's just it's this technique, that uh, a very common technique. In fact, it's a technique I've had to deal with even in my personal life recently having an argument with someone and he just, uh, he just exact same. He's kind of, he's kind of socialist person and, uh, start doing exactly the same. Just taking this, some one phrase and just repeating it mindlessly right? again and again, four legs, good, two legs, bad, four legs, good, two legs, bad. It's just used to kind of interrupt and distract. And it kind of, so it, it, it breaks up any argument or disagreement by just this mindless repetition. And this is what the sheep do. Anytime some animals start to speak up or say something or make some point, the sheep just say, four legs good, two legs bad, four legs good, two legs bad, four legs good, two legs bad, right? They're just not going to listen. They're just going to keep repeating the same thing again and again and again to try to break up and distract and uh, stop the disagreement, to distract the other person. And then, of course, and, and of course, there's always the dogs, the, the the threat of violence. The dogs can kill them. So, with the threat of violence, and then the, just the mindless repetition, all the other animals they just kind of uh, and they forget about the truth. They forget what happened. They don't trust themselves. They're afraid. They're confused by the repetition constantly. And once again, Napoleon wins. And the lies win. And then after that meeting, Squealer, he's kind of the propaganda pig, right? The, 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 the assistant, Napoleon's assistant, he goes around telling everybody, oh no, you've, you, you're, you're, you're forgot. Your memory is bad. We never, there was never a rule against money. No, no, you're forgetting. You're forgetting. That's not true. So this is, uh, 
There's actually a term for this. It's called gaslighting. But it, where it's it's again, it's this um, where through constant lies, you know, in the media. Usually, it's in the media. Was what we see it now. Television, newspapers. They just they just keep repeating the same lie again and 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 again. And then it, they just sort of can almost get people to change their own memories. They just they'll they'll change history. They'll say that something is true that's not true. They'll say something happened that did not really happen. But and just through the constant repetition, people start to doubt themselves. They start to doubt their own memory, their own belief, their own ideas, and they eventually start to believe the official lies. And this is super common everywhere in west, east, any kind of government. This it's all it's used nowadays. Next thing, another rule gets broken. <laughs> the same thing happens again. So next, the pigs move to the farmhouse, Mr. Jones' house, and they start to sleep in his bed. They start sleeping in beds. And remember, in the beginning of the revolution, they had a rule, no animal will sleep in a bed. And no animal will sleep in the farmhouse. They made a rule, the farmhouse will be a museum. No animal will live there, and no animals will sleep in beds. But the pigs do it. They change the rules. And, one, and then they use the exact same technique again, where some of the animals start are confused. Wait, I think there's a rule. We're not supposed to do this. No, there's a rule. No animals. And then of course, the pigs say, no, 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 no. You're forgetting. No, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. No, there was never a rule against beds. And finally, um, Muriel, who I believe is one of the horses, goes to look at the wall where they had the rules written. Remember, they had all the rules. They painted them on the side of the barn. Uh, but she, she, she can't read it very well. But then when she reads it, she, she sees it. It says, no animal shall sleep in a bed with sheets. So they added something to the rule. They changed the rule, right? The rule, the original rule, the real rule was no animal shall sleep in a bed. No beds at all, period. But then the pigs, they went back and they, they wrote something new. They added with sheets. So if the bed has no sheet, it's no problem. You can sleep in it, right? They changed the rule. And then, once again, they use the same technique of just repeating the lie again and again, saying, no, 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 your memory is bad. Your memory is bad. There was never a rule against beds, only a rule against sheets, right? The sheets that you put on top of the bed. That's the rule. It's against sheets, not against beds. So, again, they, 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 they do this official lie, and then they repeat it again and again and again and again and again and again. And because the animals trust the authority, the leader, Napoleon, and they trust the propaganda and the repetition, the repetition, and the fear, of course, of the dogs, all these together make them change their memories. They actually change what they remember, and they go, oh yeah, the rule's against sheets, not against beds. So they again, they believe the lie. And, you know, the pigs and the pigs again mention Mr. Jones. You know, we pigs, we need good sleep. We need to rest because we w must plan to keep away Mr. Jones, right? We must defend Animal Farm. If we don't have enough sleep, we can't do that. And if we can't do that, Mr. Jones might come back, Rah! right? The scary external enemy. So that's another technique that's used again and again and again. Next! The pigs get up an hour later in the morning than the other animals. So they sleep more than the other animals. So again, the pigs are doing something that the other animals cannot do. So first, the pigs never do hard work. They only tell people what to do, or tell animals. I keep saying people, but of course, <laughs> the, the, the real meaning of this is talking about people in history. But um, the pigs never do any hard work, and, but now they're going to sleep one hour more than the other animals who are working very hard. 
So you can see they're getting more and more special, the pigs. They're getting more and more power, more and more food, more and more special rules for them. Right? They are, they ha not are, they, they already are the elite, the top group. So they were all supposed to be equal, but of course, that's impossible. And so now the pigs are the big power. Then it talks more about the windmill. They keep working on the windmill. Everybody gets excited. They work very hard. Boxer especially works super hard on the windmill. Benjamin the donkey, the old donkey, he's the only one. He does not get excited about the windmill. He's just kind of, eh. He helps. He does his job, but he doesn't get excited. And, you know, Benjamin, as a few people have noticed, Benjamin's maybe the smartest animal. <laughs> or at least the smartest one who's not a pig. Then, finally, there's a disaster. They build. It's getting close to winter. The... The, the hard work of the summer and the fall is over. They harvest, they get the food, they collect the food again. The windmill is, uh, is half built, right? They, they build all the hard part with the, with the stones. And it took so much effort to build this windmill. And then one night, there's a huge storm. It's called a gale. Gale means strong, strong winds. And it shakes the barn, it shakes the farmhouse. Huge storm. The next day, disaster. The windmill fell down during the storm. It, it collapsed. The strong wind destroyed the windmill. Now, they all the animals run to the windmill and they're all super upset. They're very sad. Now, of course, the true reason, the reason that it fell down, was they did not build it correctly. Right? They built it bad. They built it badly, probably because Napoleon really didn't understand how to do it. Because remember, Snowball had the plans for the windmill. Maybe Snowball also had bad plans. We don't know, but we do know that Napoleon didn't really know how to do it, and so the the animals didn't really know how to do it. And so the, the one the first big storm and it knocks down. It destroys it. But Napoleon will not, of course, will not be responsible. He will not tell the truth. So what does he do? Can you guess? Who does he blame? Well, he blames an, an outside enemy again, right? But not Mr. Jones this time. This time they blame Snowball. Snowball, remember, ran away. And he says, S Snowball did it. Snowball came back and destroyed the windmill. He's an enemy. He's terrible. I, and then he says, Snowball must die. We, Snowball, we must catch him. And if we catch him, we will kill him. Now you remember, another rule of Animal Farm was animals will not kill other animals. Now he's saying that they must kill Snowball. They must find him and kill him. And of course, he's completely lying. Snowball did not cause the windmill to fall down. It was the storm. But Napoleon goes and he, he finds some tracks, meaning like some footprints, you know, you put in the mud that, that look like a pig's, which of course he did himself. And uh, then he says, look, look, these are the tracks. These are the footprints of Snowball. This proves he was here. It proves he was here. He did it. Snowball is an enemy. Arr! Right? And, and everybody gets really upset. And he says, it doesn't matter, comrades. It doesn't matter. Next year, we will build the windmill again. Snowball cannot stop us. And that is the end of chapter six. Let's go back, talk about some of the main ideas. As always, I'll give you my opinion on these, and then, then I'll go to Facebook for comments and questions, and then we're done. All right, so back to the beginning. I've already, I was commenting this time as I was reading. So as I said, they were working like slaves. So they're working much harder now, even than with the human owner. So that's, that's worse. They're working much, much harder. And again, I, you know, the, what, what's the point? What's the meaning of that? Well, it's just, it's just to show that... Once again, this utopia, this perfect society, this great idea 
doesn't work. It doesn't work because the one bad le leader, Mr. Jones, just got replaced by someone far worse, the pigs, and specifically Napoleon. The next thing I would like to discuss is Boxer because I think he's very, very, very important in this story. And I believe he is a strong warning from George Orwell. A very strong warning about why... Because this is a question uh, we've, I've had on Facebook and Twitter. We, we have discussed this some. Why? Why are people so easy to trick, right? To, to fool them. Why do people still believe these lies, right? I mean, why did the people of Venezuela believe it? When we can look at all these other countries, all this history, we see the same thing happen every time. And yet in Venezuela, they voted for it. They actually believed it would happen. This time would be different. Why do they believe the lie so easily? And even in, you know, non-communist countries, why do so many people believe the lies, the propaganda, again and again and again and again? And I think Boxer is kind of George Orwell's answer. He's, I think he's showing us the kind of person that supports these lies and revolutions. And what kind of person is it? Is it is it an evil person? No, it's the opposite. Boxer has a good, good, good heart. What do they do? The pigs use Boxer's goodness, his kindness. They use it against him. That's what they do to us. They use our kindness against us. That's how they make these revolutions. When they make the revolution, they don't say, oh, we will make a, resolu a revolution and then we will be at the top and you will work like slaves and you will have no freedom and you will lose all your freedom of speech and you will have less food and more shortages and everything will get really, really bad and you will be miserable. Of course they don't say that. That's the truth. They don't say that. What do they say? They say, we must help the poor people. Which, of course, all good, kind people want to help people who are poor. They say, we must help those who are suffering. Oh, we must help the children. Right? They always use your kindness against you. They, when they tell these lies, they always say the reason is to help the poor people, to help you know, it's a, whatever group or whatever cause, it's always using kindness. So this is why the people who believe the lies, it's not really because they're stupid, although they're not smart. <laughs> Boxer's not smart, right? They're just normal, good people with good hearts who really care, who really, they don't like suffering. They don't want people to suffer. Well, of course, none of us do. Nobody. Only very few small percent of truly evil people like seeing others suffer. But most people do not, right? And so your kindness gets used against you. I see this in America happening again and again. This is what they use to take away each freedom every time. It's The argument is always, ah, oh, some some. Kindness. You, you must be kind and help these people. You must be kind. That's why you must do it. That's my, why you must give up your freedom. Right? It's always an argument of kindness. But they use that to then take away freedom. They use that to give power, more and more power to the government, to the elite, to the top people. Right? So that's why you must always be careful, always, always be super careful when people are using this argument of kindness. And when you are fighting for freedom or you're speaking the truth and they say you are mean, you're not kind, when they try to use that as an argument, be scared, be careful. Because it's, they're probably lying to you. They're trying to, you know, use your emotions against you to accept their lies. Right? Oh, aren't you a nice person? If you're a nice person, then you will agree. Right? And the pigs use this argument all the time with the other animals. If you're a nice person, if you care about everybody else, then you will follow. You will do what we 
say. You will do what we suggest. Very, very dangerous. So, and we will see in the future, finally, it does not help Boxer. Boxer has a really terrible end. Something very bad happens to Boxer. And he's the kindest of all. And, and we see this if we look at the history of these movements, these revolutions, these socialist movements. It's the kind, good, normal people who always suffer the most. It's not the pigs who suffer. The pigs do great. The pigs get more and more and get more and more power. Nope. It's the good, kind people who really think they're helping other others. They're the ones who suffer. In Venezuela now, guess who's really suffering? Not the super rich, not the guys at the top. No, it's just the normal, everyday people who really believed. They're the ones who don't have enough food now. They're the ones who are trying to get out of the country desperately. It's really quite tragic. It's sad. And they really believed. They really believed this time it was different. They really believed the normal people were all going to be helped. And of course, it wasn't different. And it won't be different the next time in the next country. If it happens in America, it's, po it's definitely possible. Uh, it won't be different in America. It'll be just as bad. All right. Next, the shortages. I mentioned this already, but this is a common thing where we see that these... <clears throat> excuse me. These places that have these... Uh, kind of uh, totalitarian uh, control, you know, that kind of thing, that the shortages happen, right? They can't get enough. They can't get enough food. They can't get enough gasoline. They can't get enough oil. They can't get enough toilet paper. I don't know why, but toilet paper is often one you read about all the time. That they, they, There's a shortage of toilet paper. They can't get toilet paper in these countries. It's I don't know why toilet paper, but... <laughs> Often. But food, of course, is the serious one. And so, Orwell, again, is just commenting on that. It, you know, the Soviet Union had the same problems where they couldn't get enough of things. So things actually start getting worse. Their actual quality of life, their economic life, gets worse. And it's happening on Animal Farm now. Then, of course, they start to trade, so they have to start breaking their own rules. Be why do they have to break these rules? Because these rules, two reasons. But the main reason is the whole thing is a big lie. The whole thing goes against reality. Right? So that's why they can't keep going. They have to start breaking rules. Like the rule of trade, no trade, that's just an impossible rule. Because they cannot produce everything inside their farm. They can't. They don't, they don't know enough. They don't have enough there. They can't. It's in, it was an impossible rule. Again, a utopian rule, right? This, I, it was this, uh, it was some idea of some perfect society, but impossible in the real world. And this, again, is why these societies always fail. And they usually fail quite quickly. And they, they become quite miserable very fast, usually. And that's the reason they go against reality. The other reason they break the rules is that the powerful always take control. Right? Napoleon and the pigs with his dog <laughs> killers have taken control and so now they are going to start changing rules to make themselves more and more powerful, more and more rich, more and more comfortable and all the other animals are going to suffer more and more and more and more. So that's the other reason the rules, the, the ideas, the wonderful ideas of the revolution get replaced by, you know, changed rules and a quite terrible society. So it's the reality of power, always corrupting, and just the reality of you know, how the world works, how nature works, how people work. Okay, on to the next thing. What else? Uh, so, you know, and just other examples. The pigs move into the farmhouse. The pigs start to sleep in beds. You know, we're, this is something you'll just see. It just gets worse and worse and worse. 
I already discussed how they change the rules and they use propaganda to make people think, make animals think, but really people, of course, we're talking about. And, I mean, this is a technique that is happening right now. It, right now, it's happening in America and England. They're doing it. Um, for Let's discuss the windmill and then we'll talk about what ha what's happening in England and America. So, the windmill gets blown down. But this is what's really interesting is... Immediately, they blame Snowball. Well, Napoleon blames Snowball. And then they just, he just starts telling the lie. Snowball did a death to Snowball! Arr! And then he finds some fake footprints that he made, you know, of pigs. And he says, look, this is proof! This is evidence! Snowball did it! And then they, Squealer keeps repeating that, and then everybody just believes it. Well, this, this is something that uh, all governments do, but especially the evil ones where they use these false attacks or false reasons for the attacks, right? So this was not an attack at all. This was just an accident, a disaster. But then they blame it. They, they, Napoleon makes it a false attack from Snowball. Snowball's gone. We never will see Snowball again in this story. So he's kind of an imaginary enemy that Napoleon can always use as the excuse for failure. Snowball came and he did this. He destroyed this. And uh, this is something that governments use, especially for wars. So um, America used this to attack Iraq, right? Remember, they talked about weapons of mass destruction, all these terrible chemical weapons that Iraq supposedly had. And, and then they, they showed some fake proof, some fake evidence, right, in the UN. Look! And all the Americans, yes, yes, we must attack Iraq. Not all, actually. I, I, I wasn't like that. I was against it, actually. Uh, I don't remember, but there were large numbers, huge numbers of Americans against that attack. But anyway, it didn't work. So, uh, we, we couldn't stop it. So the government, American government, attacked Iraq. And guess what happened later? We found out it was all lies. All lies. Lies, lies, lies. Just lies to make this enemy that was not really our enemy at all as a reason to attack them. This is so common, so you must be super careful again in the media anytime. You must be very careful anytime you see all the media suddenly talking about one person or one group as the enemy. They're evil, they're evil, they're evil. And then they do, they attacked us, they, or they have this super weapon. And they don't really show any evidence or they show some kind of fake evidence. Is not, they, don't, they don't really let people discuss it and debate it or investigate. They're lying. They're lying. And when I mention the UK and uh, America now, mostly it's the UK actually, it's, they're doing it with Russia. They're doing it with Russia right now. The, chem, the, the supposed chemical attack on those uh, two people. I mean, the honest truth is we don't. We have no idea what happened, but the British government is showing no evidence at all, and it's just evil Russia, evil Russia, evil Russia, rah, rah, and all the media, Russia's evil, evil, Putin's evil. Rah, rah, rah. It's the same exact te technique as Napoleon using with Snowball. And, you know, again, no evidence, and it's just, a, it's just an excuse to try to... Uh, I don't think... I don't, hopefully, hopefully they're not trying to create a war with Russia... But they are trying to dis create a distraction, right? Focus on the, the scary, evil, outside enemy. So you don't see the problem. So they don't, the people don't think about the problems happening inside their own country. So they don't question the leaders in their own country. This is the technique. This is why they use this technique again and again and again and again and again. And, you know, if, if we look at history, we can... There are countless examples of this. The Vietnam War, I'll, I'll just use American examples since I'm American. I can criticize my own country. Um, the Vietnam War, they did this exact same thing. They made a fake attack on an American boat, American ship. And uh, it's called Gulf of Tonkin Incident. And in the news, all the American media said, the Vietnamese attacked an American ship. And there was, uh, uh, in all the news, again and again and again and again, they said that. And so all the Americans, yeah, we must go and fight more, send more soldiers to Vietnam. And then later we found out it was a complete lie. There was no attack. They did, they did not attack the American ship. So 
this is a common thing and some but for some reason again everybody not everybody I should stop saying that but it's, most people still believe these things when the media just says it again and again it's in all the media and repeat it again and again and again and again most people are like boxer or like the sheep and they just ah oh, okay uh, and they they still believe it and then later we find out Oh, another lie. So just be careful. My, my, it's just always best to, to when, when you see suddenly something like this happen in the news and the news is trying to point to some enemy, they're the terrible enemy, they're the devil, they're the new Hitler, that's when you should be very careful and you should not trust what they're doing. That's the sure sign. It doesn't matter who, is it, who it is, it doesn't matter who's doing it. Really, in, 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 all countries do this to, at some level. Most countries, I shouldn't say all again, most. Um, and they use it in lots of different ways, and it's used in history. So, the, we don't usually know the full truth, right? Like the thing with the, the Russia and, and, and the UK, I know it's propaganda. I don't know the truth. Did the Russians kill them? Did they not? Was, was, did Putin order it or did someone else? Nobody, we don't know that. There's no evidence at all. We've shown nothing. The, the, so the honest answer is we have no idea. So the question then is, do you trust the media or not? And I don't. And I think it's best not to. We don't know the truth. We know they're lying. <laughs> that's, that's what we do know. We know they're lying. What the actual truth is, we probably will never know. Or we'll know many years from now. Like with the attack on Iraq and the chemical weapons and all that, or like with the Vietnam thing. And I'm not only, I'm not specifically trying to criticize only America because other countries have done this too, but more recently America, with the big American empire, America has done it a lot more. And Alrighty. So that's enough. Let's go to Facebook now. That's enough of my opinions. Now, uh, let me just say again, um, just remind you, I've said it every single show, so I will say it again, just to be sure. Um, they're sort of the very clear messages from Orwell. And then, in, in addition, there are, are my opinions. So, my opinions are my opinions, and you don't have to agree. You know, I'm just trying to give you things to think about. The reason I'm giving my opinion is just to get you thinking about these things. Try to start thinking at a deeper level, uh, you know, asking deeper questions. Uh, you know, what, what could this mean? What could, what could Orwell be trying to tell us? And are these messages connected to my own life now? Are these messages connected to the real world now. And I think there are very important messages in Animal Farm that connect to the world right now. They still connect to the world right now. So you don't have to believe me. Don't, in fact, don't. Right? The message of Animal Farm, <laughs> probably the big message is don't just believe somebody. You gotta think for yourself. You gotta question and doubt and be careful. So I don't want to replace propaganda with my propaganda. So you, you, you don't need to just believe what I say. I want you just to think about it. I'm giving, your, giving you my personal ideas to help you think and question. Hmm, is he right? Is he wrong? Or is there something else? Also, you know, maybe your country, you see, everyone will see a little bit different meaning depending on your country, depending on your history, depending on your life experience. So that's the great thing about these books. Again, so I just need to say that because I don't, I want you absolutely don't want people just to accept what I say. Um, that's not the purpose of this. All right, let's go to Facebook and I will, we're live on Facebook and I will answer questions or mention comments that are live. Let's see what you all think. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Elena says, so this is interesting. In my opinion, the lies and propaganda in Russia against America recently are much bigger than in America. So, eh. so surprise, surprise. She says, Russia, they're doing exactly the same thing against America. So the Russian media is saying tons and tons of, lots and lots. Tons and tons means a lot, a lot, a lot. It's kind of a slang. 
So they're, they're saying a lot of propaganda, a lot of bad things, a lot of lies against America. So see, that's what I'm saying. All, most <laughs> countries do this. Maybe all. Most of the ones I've actually visited or seen, they do this, right? So the powerful, do, it's not only countries do this, actually. Large companies do this. It's called public relations. It's like professional lying. <laughs> so uh, it's not only countries that do this, but big billion dollar companies also do this. All right, on to Facebook. Just lots of hellos from different places. Hungary, Hungary, uh, Moscow. Mm-hmm. What time does your program always start? Well, that's a good question. Well, it, I, I, I think I've been doing about 6 o'clock on Sunday. 6 o'clock Sunday night. That's Japan time. I'm in Japan right now. But sometimes I have to change it a little because of my schedule. But that's the, that's the usual time for the live. Now, of course, I always add the recording to YouTube and my blog. So if you miss the live, you can always watch the recording. <laughs> Elena also says, there was no toilet paper in the Soviet Union. We used newspaper. So yeah, it's, it's weird, right? Why, why toilet paper? Is it hard to make? Um, maybe it's kind of a luxury, you know, I, I, I really don't know why. But it's just one of those things you, you read about you know, one of these uh, societies, and it's always, uh, toilet paper is one of the big shortages. I love your shirt. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm wearing my, my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu shirt today. Does the show start 6 p.m. Tokyo? Yes, Tokyo time. Tokyo time. I'm in Osaka, but same time zone. Ah, good question. Nicola asks, what's the main difference between Animal Farm and 1984? Orwell's two f most famous books. Animal Farm and 1984. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, well, I would say the, the, the difference, it, the, first of all, style is completely different. Uh, Animal Farm, I, as you see, uses animals. It's short, it's using animals, it's, it's what we might call a parable, it's like a big metaphor, right? It's, it's, it's a, like, almost like a cartoon. Talking animals, making a revolution, it's kind of has a dark, this kind of dark humor, right? It's kind of funny in a way, thinking of these animals fighting against the humans. So it, it's kind of a little bit of a, you know, it's a fantasy, like a fairy tale. Like a cartoon, like a Disney cartoon almost, like a really scary Disney cartoon, <laughs> right? So that's Animal Farm. So it's done in a, uh, uh, maybe a, a lighter, you know, lighter meaning a, emotionally a little lighter. 1984 is a more, I would say, realistic style. It describes a human society. And Orwell was predicting the future when he wrote it. So he's describing a society. He saw this, what that was happening in the Soviet Union and even in the West, in some ways. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he, he sort of saw what these people, the people at the top, what they wanted to do to get total control. So 1984 describes that society where this group at the top, the party, totally controls every part of of everyone's lives, including how they think, everything. It is a heavy book, right? It's not light and funny. It's super depressing, <laughs> at least for me. Super, super depressing. <laughs> um, I mean, it's basically describing hell on earth, is what it's describing. But and it's, and, it, and then he he shows the kind of in a much more realistic way the exact. The, the similar techniques we see in Animal Farm, but he, he shows them in more detail in 1984. And he shows them in a realistic human society way, right? So it's also an excellent book, but man, it's, it makes me depressed 
<laughs> but there, it's depressing because it's, it is realistic and it's possible. And we've even seen it in some countries. We're close to it. And with more technology, the, that terrible society of 1984 becomes possible. All right. Uh, Nicola says, in Serbia, we can still see consequences of the NATO bombing. Another example. Another example of the propaganda. And, the, you know, what makes the propaganda so terrible, these lies are used to cover or to um, motivate people to do terrible things. Terrible, terrible things. In Animal Farm, you can see it's, it's a, a reason for... The pigs to start taking more and more and more and more. Napoleon to get more and more power. And you will see the suffering really starts uh, probably the next chapter. I don't remember. I, haven't, I need to read the next chapter. But uh, in the next few chapters, the real terrible suffering begins for the animals. And, that, and the lies are used to cover that, to hide it. Governments make schools worse and worse, so there's no real education in my country because they want to take control and become the leaders. Exactly right. So again, we see it from Animal Farm where Napoleon took control of the dog's education so he could make them obedient, right? Make them his obedient followers, do everything he said. Right and become his kind of his and in, in the story, the dogs become his killers. But in a more general way, this what this comment is saying and is absolutely right. Education is one of the big, big, big methods. And the young, it was, we've seen this also in a lot of these revolutions. Uh, you know, in Germany, Hitler had the Hitler Youth, right, where they will use the young people, the, especially like the teenagers. They will use them for their revolution. They will use them for their purposes. Why? Because they're easy to program. They have no life experience. They don't really know truth. They have no history in life. So they, they more easily believe the lies. They more, and they have a good heart, and they, they more easily believe the lies that sound good, that sound wonderful. Again, we see this in the United States happening right now, where they're using these teenagers, for their propaganda. And then if you criticize the teenagers, they say, oh, you're a bad person. These are just kids. How can you say bad things about them? Right? It's, it's, a, it's a terrible technique, the way they use the youth. Uh, we saw it in Cambodia. Again, Cambodia is another tragic example where they had you know children spying on their parents they had ch child soldiers, you know, young teenagers, and, and I mean like 14 years old, uh, with guns that they would train them to hate and to shoot people, to execute people, shoot them in the head, back of the head. Um, horrible. So this is another thing to be care to watch for. If you see that uh, some political group is using children or teenagers for their cause and pushing the teenagers into the media and push trying to organize the teenagers and the youth against the old people those old people they're the problem super dangerous super super dangerous be careful All right, can see some more questions. There's a ton of questions here, so I'll do a few more. Lots of people saying hello from their country. Happy Easter from Poland. Thank you very much. So happy Easter to all of you who celebrate Easter. Hello from Germany. Don't make noise, let it keep you. Uh, I'm always thinking about the best country to live in. Many Russians dream of living in America, but I know from you that America is far from perfect. Indeed. Um, similar terrible things are happening. What about Japan? Do you like Japan more than your native country? 
What is the situation like in Japan? Well, that's a very interesting question. Uh, you know, the truth is yes. I have to say I do like Japan. I think Japan is a healthier, better society than the United States. Which is sad for me to say. Because I am an American and I do love, you know, the, the history and the culture, or the old culture, <laughs> the traditions of the United States. But, um, yeah, sad to say that I don't think it's uh, such a great place now. Some places are. Some places are, but some places aren't. Um, America has a lot of problems, for sure. And I do, you know, Japan has problems. Every country has problems. There's no, there's no utopia. <laughs> Doesn't exist. But overall, I do enjoy living in Japan. I find the people, the society is just closer, right? In America, there's almost a civil war. Half the people hate the other half. Um, and it, it possibly could become violent or it possibly could become like Animal Farm where someone takes control and just starts doing terrible stuff. It's already happening at some level, and it's moving in a dangerous direction. Uh, Japan, I think, is just a more stable, um, united country. Where people care about each other, and that's that's what I like about Japan. And they, they still care about their tradition and their history, too, which is very nice. <laughs> Happy Easter again. Thank you, Luciana. Lu is it Luci Luciana? Poland. Lots of people saying Happy Easter. All right, let's see. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu says Jose. Oos! <laughs> yes, indeed. Noticing my t shirt. This is the t shirt from my Jiu Jitsu gym in uh, Osaka. So the name is Impacto. Uh, there are some big. Uh, anyone, if you do br Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, off topic, not talking about Animal Farm. Uh, there are some quite famous gyms that have organizations, I should say, associations uh, that are international. Gracie Baja is, I think, number one. Atos. There's, there's some really big ones. And uh, Impacto is one that's uh, only in Asia. Only, so only, oh, Japan and Korea. Impacto. But the, uh, the leaders of Impacto are Brazilian. So they're Brazilians who live in Japan or live in Asia. So it's still Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. My instructors, my two main instructors are Brazilian. Hello from Georgia. Hello, Miriam. Turkey, Lithuania, lots of places. <laughs> Giuseppe says, when I was on the train yesterday, I spotted some people, I saw some people grinning, big smiles, uh, by themselves, alone. So he said, so I suppose I thought they were either on drugs or studying effortless English. <laughs> He's joking. Hopefully they were studying effortless English. All right, let's just read a few more comments and then we're done. Thank you for everyone who's saying nice things about me. Oh, so what, 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 which city are you living in, Osaka? We're in the south of Osaka. Um, oh, what's the nearest place? Suminoe, I guess, would be the closest. Ah! So this is a question not about it. Let's see. Uh, well, that's not quite about Animal Farm. <laughs> Looks like I'm about done. I think I've answered all the questions and comments about Animal Farm and a few that were not. So, a little a little bit, let's look at the time, a little bit shorter today. I hope you enjoyed chapter six. Now, Facebook guys, stay here. I'll come, I'll talk a few more minutes to you, but otherwise, the show is finished. Next week, chapter seven of Animal Farm. We're getting closer to the end, so we need to think of our next book soon. But 
If you have it, if you can, try to read Chapter 7 of Animal Farm. We will discuss it next week. As we see, things will get worse and worse and worse for the poor animals. <laughs> All right. Hope you enjoyed today's show. Thanks, as always, for joining me. Enjoy English. Just relax and enjoy. Listen. You can repeat this video. Relax and enjoy. I will see you next time. As always, join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com EffortlessEnglishClub.com Thank you. Lots of love as always. See you next week.